How's everyone doing? That's what I'm talking about. Made the drive in from uh, Durham this afternoon. Thank you. Greatly appreciate it. Dirty D. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> well, hey, I, I want to know who I'm talking to. Entrepreneurs, show of hands. Okay, okay. Sales professionals, show of hands. Now, sales professionals, show of hands. Everybody. Everybody is in sales. Let me ask you this. When you think about sales, what's your definition? Help me out. An alien comes down and says, hey, what is this thing you call sales? What do you say? Somebody, help me out. What's that? Effective communication. Filling needs. Making connections. I like that. I like that. When I think about sales, I think about two things. Sales is the transfer of energy. It's the transfer of energy. If you're not energized about what it is that you have, how can you expect someone else to be energized? The second one, and this one is fire, I love it. It's really playing matchmaker. It's matching your products and or services with someone else's needs, their wants, their desires, and their challenges. That's why I put a smile on my face when I get to sell every single day. And I get to help professionals take their game to the next level as professional sellers because we get to help people each and every day. So this slide behind me is my journey. I'm a professional journeyman. There's a lot of logos. So Jim mentioned it earlier. I played baseball at University of Maryland. Go Terps. I batted lead off, so I, I like starting us off. But I, I've had quite the journey. I mean, just to summarize it, I've worked for big companies, Accenture, Intuit. I worked for mid-sized companies, your channel advisors. And then most recently, I've had the opportunity to work with some pretty hot startups in the Raleigh-Durham area. I'm not sure. Show of hands, anyone ever heard of Pendo? Yeah, exactly. I was employee number 40, had the opportun opportunity to grow the uh, lead generation team. We had three reps. When I left, we had 22. So uh, quite the ride. And right now, I'm the director of collegiate sales at a company called Teamworks. So with my athletic background, we sell software to elite athletic teams. Uh, I've got two reps that will be here at UNCW on Thursday trying to help them to empower and engage their student athletes. Help them right now, but also prepare them for the future. I've got a passion for helping folks, entrepreneurs, sales professionals take their game to the next level. So that's, that's what we're going to do. Hopefully you'll walk away with more information than when you came in. Uh, this is my motto. Only you can make it happen. It starts with that person in the mirror. It's so cliche, but I truly believe it's about you making it happen. Uh, another motto that I have for my team is Fido. You might say, Larry, is that the name of your dog? No, it's not. I'm afraid of dogs. I got bit when I was younger. I got a uh, 4.8 pound Pomeranian. His name is Shaq. But Fido stands, I'm going to keep it HR uh, positive here. Fido stands for forget about it, drive on. F it, drive on. Because that's really the motto you got to have if you're a sales professional. You're going to get hit with obstacles here, there, everywhere. So uh, I, I like to start off with this quote. Anyone ever heard of Rory Vaden? Rory Vaden, author of Take the Stairs? Love it. Love it. And this quote right here, success is never owned. It's rented. And the rent is due each and every day. Think about that. Each and every day that you show up, the rent is due. It's kind of like Michael Jordan. I'm in the hometown of MJ, right? He said every time that he stepped on the floor, he wanted to make sure that that kid that only got to see him one time, there was no mystery who the greatest of all time was. It's the same thing. When we come in, we can't just check in, clock in, and clock out. We've got to bring the pain each and every day. So uh, with that, we're going to get into to my top three. And, and as, as Matt outlined, these are the basics. I'm a big believer of the basics. I've been blessed. My, my daughter starts kindergarten tomorrow. My son started the uh, fourth grade last week. We're going to be talking about the basics here. Number one is planning, preparation, and prioritizing. Now, what does that mean? you got to start off with a plan. I'm looking out here. I see some people are taking notes. Put it in writing. What's your plan? What's your goal? What are you trying to accomplish? What's the path that you're going to get there? In, in prospecting, filling the funnel, you got to have your ideal customer profile, your ICP. Who are you reaching out to? What's important to them? Why are you reaching out to them? What's your message? Have you helped people that are just like them before? Essentially, that's got to be in your plan. And you've got to be able to follow your plan. Show of hands, how many people have a business plan? I love it. Show of hands, how many people actually use their business plan? I used to own a business. I used to own a baseball academy. The numbers that I knew were essentially home runs and batting averages, stolen bases. 
It wasn't the income statement and the balance sheet, and that's why I'm no longer in business because our plan, we went in with the accountant, and then it went right into the, uh, the folder, never to be seen until the next year when we met with the accountant. You have to follow your plan. It's like a compass. Essentially, if I was to sail from New York to Africa and I had a compass, but I put it in the cabinet, I'm going to end up in the North Pole chilling with Santa Claus. That's not a good place to be. <laughs> in your plan, you should map out your allies, your resources. People want to help. In addition to your ICP, your ideal customer profile, who are the people that can help you get there? You should map out your stories. There's something called story selling. Not storytelling, but story selling. I love the story that you talked about. That's memorable with the clams. I don't eat clams. I, I don't know how to swim, so I'm not going in the water, but stories sell. They're memorable. Uh, number two, everyone had the great philosopher, Mike Tyson. Everyone has a plan until you get punched in the mouth. This right here for me is persistence. When I interview folks, and I, I, I apologize that I failed to, to kind of introduce, I manage nine sales reps. Majority of them are former collegiate athletes, and they're trying to really get it done in the boardroom, trying to take their game to the next level. We get beat over the head each and every day. Uh, we're interviewing people right now. I'm looking for folks that when you get hit with an obstacle, you find a way over it, find a way under it, find a way around it, and if you have to, boom, find a way right through it. That persistence. Another one of my sayings is don't stop, get it, get it. I don't know if you guys know that. Don't Google it while you're at work. That's, that's the great philosopher Uncle Luke. Don't stop, get it, get it. But you got to have that persistence when you go about prospecting. Because Matt talked <laughs> Yeah, Uncle Luke. <laughs> Matt talked about it, you're going to get a lot more no's than you get yeses. It's, it's awesome because for me, it reminds me of my days playing baseball. I struck out a lot. But every time I came to bat, I had that confidence in myself. I think Kevin Hart says it best, say it with your chest. You got to be confident. You have to believe in yourself. Uh, when I think about sales, once again, it's playing matchmaker. I believe in my heart. I believe in my head. And it, it comes out with my mouth that I know I have a solution that can help you that can help you accomplish your goals, overcome your challenges, get to where you want to get to. So I'm going to be bold. It's kind of like Paul Revere. And I actually had a rep who checked me. He said, Larry, your story about Paul Revere is false. Uh, I'm going to stick with it. Paul Revere, he didn't just tell some people that they were coming. He told everybody. That's what prospecting is. It's telling everybody. Uh, you also got to prioritize. I'm a big believer of having your A list targets, where you give them the white glove treatment, having your B's and your C's. The C's, I love to test. I love to throw things out there and see what works. The, the A's, and I'll give you all an example. We, we reach out to athletic directors. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you all, if anyone has access to the athletic director down the road at UNCW, hook a brother up. I, I could use a, a connection there. But essentially, we put together customized and personalized boxes. They, they had a nice little Yeti inside of it, had some golf balls, had a little portable iPhone charger, and then we wrote a handwritten note, and we sent that out. We sent it out to 44. I think we got 27 responses, which for us athletic directors of big colleges and universities, that's strong for us right there. Now, we can't do that with everybody, but the results are there. Uh, driving activity. When I talk about persistence, activity. A lot of my reps, they like to hide behind email. No, no, no. You got to pick up that 500 pound phone, reach out and touch somebody. So I've worked in environments where we were making 150 calls. That's, that's a beast. But you talk about going out and getting it. If you're about that life of going out and getting it, you're going to pick up that phone and make a lot of calls. You should also supplement that with emails, social media, show of hands. Who writes handwritten notes? Anyone write handwritten notes? I appreciate your honesty. Write handwritten notes. The little things mean so much. I had a VP of sales, Jay Borkowski, he told me, hey, Larry, they did a study of horse racing. I'm not into horse racing. I love blackjack. I love craps. But horse racing, no, nah, I can't do it. But over the course of a season, they looked at the number one horse and the number two horse. They looked at the combined times. And the combined times between number one and number two, it was tenths of a second difference. They then looked at the earnings of the number one horse and the number two horse. Millions of dollars difference. So that right there, share, that, that essentially tells me that it's in the details and the little things mean so much. The last one I got for you, differentiation. I had a conversation with two entrepreneurs this afternoon that were talking about how do I differentiate in a sea of sameness, in a sea of black boxes, how do you ensure that you're a green triangle? You're not like the rest. 
You're fighting tons of things. We work with athletic departments. It's not, they're not fighting against other games that are going on. They're fighting against Fortnite. They're fighting against activities with the family. That's why they're not going to basketball and football games. What, what I recommend is getting creative. And so many times, my, my experience with sales professionals is, hey, Larry, I'm not creative. I'm going to call BS on that. You better get creative, and you better be intentional to think through, what can I do to separate myself from everyone else? The perfect example that my company has come up with are business cards. They're not like any other business card. We're, we're in the athletic space. This is my business card right there. Don't judge the stance. I can't, I can't do it like I used to. But essentially, our business cards are trading cards. You better believe, I met a bunch of athletic directors in June in, uh, in Orlando at NACTA. And essentially they said, wow, this is impressive. I wish we had thought of that. I wish we would do something like that. Well, what's holding you back? It's that person in the mirror. Only you can make it happen. So in closing, uh, here goes the summary. You guys heard it. Plan, prepare, and prioritize. I'm going to stick with the theme of that, all the Ps. Number two, persistence. Don't stop, get it, get it. And then number three, differentiation. Now, I apologize. I forgot one. And this is probably the most important point out of it all. I don't know if y'all can tell, but I like to have fun. You got to have fun. If you show up every day and you're not enjoying what you're doing, time to hang them up. Time to retire. Find something new. You've got to enjoy what you're doing. And that gets lost so, so many times. I see it with reps that come in, and it's like they're just here clocking in and clocking out. If you're not passionate about what it is you're doing, find something else to do. Life is too short, too short. So in closing, this is one of my favorite quotes right here. Henry Ford, whether you believe you can or believe you can't, you're right. My wife and I have this debate all the time. I'm a big believer that this right here is powerful. That belief in self is super powerful. So in closing, I want to say only you can make it happen. Don't stop. Get it, get it. Thank you.